On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. I don't know exactly how to take the fact that everybody goes, I've just really loved Jenny's Instagram stories, especially when she's like (laughs) ragging on you about your clothes. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of like when coach was telling me, Oaks, you sure got a lot of heart. You know, like, how do you take that? It's like, you're not, you know, whatever. So we got Jenny, Zach, and Matt in the house today. Hey, everybody. Good to see you or hear, hear you. Here. Here you. Hello. Yes. See you. Hello. Yeah, it's like yeah. kind of that Oaks, you sure got a lot of heart. It was always just basically like, you know, only if you had some, only if you were more of an athlete, no. but you sure he try tries hard. hard. He tries hard. So it's complimentary. Most recently, and I'll put this in the husband category of my Instagram so oh, you yeah, guys was, can see it. Yeah. So Heath uh, went out to Walmart Ooh. to get some stuff for our Christmas tree that we couldn't find, which we actually had, but like he. I don't know, didn't want to get it out of storage or something, so he just uh-huh. bought new stuff at Walmart. Anyway, he got a wreath, and he was like, <laughs> like, oh, want me to hang this wreath up on the front? And I'm like, yeah, sure, great idea. So anyway, I go out to walk Brighton the next day, yeah, and it's a wreath with an attached bow. Like, it's an all-in-one sort of deal. A big red bow or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And the bow <laughs> is on the bottom flipped upside down just hanging there almost like a like a windstorm had come in and knocked oh. the thing over but it's like Heath just went out there threw it on the door and came back in like didn't give it a second yep. look I love it was it. completely upside down the bow was flipped forward if I wanted to lie I would if not though the truth is, is I just threw it on there and walked on off and didn't yeah, care yeah, at all. No, clearly well, <laughs> clearly what is your philosophy for decorating the Christmas tree do you put a lot of sentimental ornaments do they all have to match is it overloaded well, Brighton broke all of our sentimental <laughs> ornaments. What? <There> <laughs> so she just grabs them. Ball. She's had ball? 18 months already. Yeah. For, okay. Ball. Yeah. Ball. Right. Balls are supposed and so to bounce. All bounce. Oh, balls bounce. Right, right, so right, right, before right. we could even get to uh, she's faster than us. Yeah. So <laughs> and smarter, apparently, too. Yeah. Um, but we do. We do. Pretty I wouldn't basic. say we do like one of those really fancy trees where no sentimental ornaments are allowed or where no ornaments are. Um, Not matching. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, it has sentimental. this year we have sort of a red and silver theme theme and just like the wreath on the front door <laughs> upside yeah. down bow theme and then we have in his mom's gotten us some Heath's mom's gotten us several special ornaments and then my mom got us a couple like Charlie's first Christmas and mm-hmm. then Brenton's first Christmas and um and I have one from that I got during my internship in New York that for some reason is always special to me so I always hang that up too so it doesn't match We're I'm sure mixed. that if, if Brighton makes us an ornament at her it'll little make it on the tree. school it'll definitely be front and center yeah. on the right. tree yeah. just yeah. like yeah. her artwork I was going to say, it's going to go on the back if it doesn't match. No, 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 we're no. Not, I'm we're not like that. We're, yeah, we're I not like that. I think that's kind of shady. It is. Yeah, I we're not like, like that. that. <laughs> that's like, well, you're cooler than your kids. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, we're not like that. It, it's It's got the red and silver balls and the, the, the red like bows on it, but then we have the sentimental stuff in right. there no matter it's what good. the color yeah. is. Good like good. a little yes. structure in there, yeah, yes. and the sentimental. Right, yes. Well, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Any uh, Packers-related ornaments on there? No, you we know, don't I'm have any. I'm surprised we don't. Yeah, well, this I'm ne- surprised we don't have a tree topper as a cheese. Yeah. Well, I don't. I mean, look. I <laughs> mean, I didn't know attempt. I could get away with that. I mean, look. If you're, you're saying, saying if you're saying I can get away you with that, you could do then, a tree in your man cave. Yeah, so you know, before you this next headline, just uh, I'm a big Packer fan, so time that's to go back why. to Walmart and get a yes. tree topper. Uh, <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Packers and Longhorns. For anybody thinking about sending Heath a gift, uh, yeah. the Green Bay Packers have parted ways with head coach Mike McCarthy and named Joe Philbin and. Interim head coach, President and Chief Executive Officer, Executive Officer, Good Lord, Mark Murphy announced Sunday, uh, the 2018 season has not lived up to the expectations and standards of the Green Bay Packers. As a result, I made the difficult decision to relieve Mike McCarthy of his role as head coach effective immediately. Murphy said, "Mike has been a terrific head coach and a leader of the Packers for 13 seasons, during which time we experienced a great deal of success on and off the field." He thanked his wife Jessica and the rest of the McCarthy family. Um, 
That's the headline. So, I, as a Packer fan, you know, Mike McCarthy, we won a, he won a Super Bowl with us and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, and Mike McCarthy was a good coach. Um, the last couple of years, he has seemed very, we have not lived up to our, but how we really should have been. And, and it, you could really tell people weren't really playing for him. And so, um, it's kind of been a couple of years of like, come on, buddy, get, you know, you, yeah. you have a good team there and y'all aren't really winning the games you should, you know. You can only live off that Super Bowl that you had a long time ago so long before you got to actually, you know, start having a little bit going. And, and um, it was kind of shocking they did it in the middle of the season like this. But yeah. th- there must have been something going on behind the scenes, like some stuff that must have been said, done that was not – we don't know. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, whenever I whenever I think about this story on, on the second shot of it all, I think about, honestly, 10 years or so – of doing anything one thing exactly the same you know can get very easy to be complacent oh, you know yeah, especially sure. a high pressure job like this that this got to wear on you more than anything to not have that fire um and and all of that in you and so look sometimes people got to push you out for you to go search and get that fire mm-hmm. back in you and so i i, I have no doubt that Mike McCarthy, maybe some time off, and that kind of happened to him. Would we'll, we'll put a jolt in him, and, and wherever he goes next, will will he will be the Mike McCarthy that won the Packers the Super Bowl mm. and have that fire and re-energize. But I I think there are ways though that you can keep kind of that fire and inner energetic in you, even though if you're doing it for a long time, you know. Well, you've been doing the same thing mm-hmm. for. 10 years yeah. now so i guess you guys have been on the same well it's not the same but I, the but, good but thing for me is oh, i've had changes in lots changes, of stuff and that's you? what's helped right. me you, sh- you had a lot of shifts in, or- in uh-huh. the organization you're not in yeah. the same position moves and, and all that and, yeah. and, and stuff so that's what i mean you think about it every time you move station and stuff you get this super re-energy completely right? yeah yes you set new goal yeah and i've moved stations every you know two three years for 15 years yeah. so it's true you kind of have it's an ebb and flow you get in you get to know the community you're out there meeting people you're going to every event you're meeting all the public information officers the police chiefs you know your colleagues you're getting your computer set up find you know really researching those stories then you make contacts so you don't have to be yeah. in as deep then you can really flourish on air and before you know it then you're kind of applying for that next job and so you're constantly staying um I guess reinvigorated. Reinvig- but that's what a, a lot of people ask. You know, I don't think you have to get your energy from like your job, right? Like that's not what it doesn't have to be like that for you to have your passion, your zeal for life in general, right? Agreed. Yeah. Um, and but but here's what people don't do is they don't take the time to assess that and understand it. Is that um, if if your job is is um, not energizing you, bringing you that. A lot of times, those people have nothing outside of it either. And I, I think you can get into a downfall no matter what you're doing is if you have your eggs in one basket of energy, right? Like, like you need to have something that sparks you. That's why I've always gone – I've always had that um, outside hobby thing I'm trying mm-hmm. to conquer because it really, truly energizes me for my work and everything. Something about having that passion. Like, if you're that person, like um, – um, you know, I, I look at your dad. Your dad is Jenny's dad is super happy. He is super energetic. He literally has a, like a metabolic age of like forty at sixty four. <laughs> like he and, and like literally, he just oh, got wow. tested. It's um, insane. Oh, wow. he, look, My dad and I are the same age. No, yep. <laughs> but like, and Joe has lived a very happy, grateful life. Got a great family. Everything with it, right? Yeah. His job, he could really almost care less about. He does it to make his paycheck. But his passion is bicycle racing that he still does at sixty four. And outside that, that's right. why and the job has and not been sports, the job yeah. hasn't been miserable for him because he has other things that he actually loves and gets to do. And 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 he does He's never taken the promotions at job or anything because he don't want more responsibility because he wants more time to do all of his outside stuff. That is a great happy life. Like there's right. that's what people got to understand is you can't pigeonhole yourself into where you have an identity with this one thing and this one thing only, and you don't have outside things that help you do that because I believe that's what helps the energy and. People that are head coaches in NFL, they don't have a time to have another hobby. Mm-hmm. So that's why they get pigeonholed into that so hard, and then they get tired because you do it that hardcore for so long. And I really encourage people to have those outside. You need a couple of things that you can go get your energy from um, and your passion out of. Like That's why I want to learn to be a pilot. Like I was 
energized and that energized mm-hmm. me to work as well because you're learning something and you're you know it just it does that i don't know if that makes sense i don't know if i'm making sense oh at definitely all. Oh, no, yeah that no makes sense. it definitely makes sense and i think that's a great example in my dad yeah because um you know we yeah you've got to find your passion it yeah. could be at work it could be outside of it the thing that really struck me in kind of my quick second shot before we wrap up here was um you know in the sort of announcement letter from the packers from just a family perspective, they said, we want to thank Mike, his wife Jessica, and the rest of the McCarthy family for all that they have done for the Packers and the Green Bay and the Green Bay and Wisconsin communities. So so you hear about his his family. Gosh, this this man who's devoted his whole life has a wife and has children, and thank God he has kept that intact because what's going to be there for you when that one job you've poured everything into is not there anymore. Yep. And that's going to be a place that we're all going to find ourselves in, you know, whether it's in retirement or whether it's during a job loss or something like that. We cannot forget what keeps us together. And that may, you know, you may not have a spouse, but perhaps it's friends. Yep. Or perhaps you need to go and find that community yep. outside of work. Yep. Because really, I mean, you have to, we're, we're all going to face this and you have to have sort of, you know, shore yourself up for these instances. And so just that line that the Packers even recognize that yep. too. Like, look, I, we're passing you off to the family now. And, and, and we hope that family's, you know, intact yeah. and doing well and that you've been taking care of them and taking, you know, and, and investing in those relationships just like you've been investing in that job because that's all we have is our, our family and our friendships and our outside communities. Well, and it's not just sometimes that it's a um, you, you're doing something and I think if you ever feel like you've been doing something for a long time and you kind of just feel like you're going through the motions, you know, that's a time you've got to realize and go find something outside that's a hobby. A lot of times these people that are these, you know, quote unquote grinders, you ask them what their hobby is and they say work i'm going you're setting yourself up for failure because what's going to happen to you is there's going to come a time that you really get it figured out and you and the train's rolling and when that happens you're going to feel lost mm. because you, you you're going to feel like you're like what what do i do now where's my because you know you poured all your energy into the creating of it all all these you know all the newness of it and then you don't know what to do to keep that train rolling and that's where you got to have some of those outside things that that um you know not that it pulls you from work you know like flying a plane didn't pull me from work it 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 re-energized me for work and and learning to do this and learning you know building the house is taking up time right like there's but there's other goals outside of this one thing that's not going to define me and own me so that i don't feel lost and and others don't as well and that's where i think you've got to take it that don't get stuck in that hamster wheel and i would also say that if you feel like you're stuck in the hamster wheel Ask yourself right now, do I have a hobby outside of this that I'm passionate about? And if you don't, go find that before you give up on your job right there. Because sometimes if Mm -hmm. you go find that, that could re-energize you into both worlds. And you go, okay, I wasn't done with where I'm at Mm -hmm. working-wise. I just had nothing else. So I would encourage you to maybe test that to see because you need to put some stuff in to where – um, you have some other energies and passion projects um, because if you pigeon yourself into that one hole, then you're going to set yourself up for some disappointment and, and kind of laziness, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Totally. So we'll be back in a minute on the third segment of Second Shot. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. Keith Oaks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. To all of my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now, listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code Second Shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second Shot is back for another round on RNCN. You know your dentist screwed you up when you're already trying to go to the third segment and you forget about the second segment. <laughs> I know. I'm like, where? Hold up. 
Yeah. Hold up. I had, Whoa. I had, I had, I had the first time been back in like, it feels like about a month, and then and I got half my mouth swollen and stuff, and everybody's going to be like, you know what, why don't you leave, and let's just have Jenny no. there. And no. Else. No, because, because if you left, you wouldn't be there to do that whole last segment just to um, be a pitch for yourself to start getting into some other sort of racing. Because <laughs> I know go. that's what that was about, him talking about passions, <laughs> because he wants that's to go get a uh, like dirt bike or motorcycle or cart or I don't oh. even know that I'm using the wrong vocabulary because I know so little about these sports except for that they're dangerous my my parents are just about to retire they're real close my mom has like four and a half days of work left oh, my wow. dad has to finish the year yeah and they're both teachers so that's what they've been doing for 35 years and my dad man he's like I want to go get a motorcycle thing certificate so I can drive a motorcycle again I got a ton of work to do in the house I want to get back into woodworking my mom no idea what she's going to do and I'm like you got to get a hobby you gotta like, find you gotta, yeah and whatever she finds is going to be great and like I, I'm so excited for what they go into next but man but people, just, people yeah. need to make sure they find those throughout their life instead of waiting till the end of it too mm-hmm. I think you want to live it while you're there and enjoy that journey with it more I don't, you know what um to talk because Jenny's dad is, is is kind of somebody who inspires me with that because he is so like he's hardcore racing at 64 yeah. still had back surgery like not even a year ago and he's already and he Ready goes up go. skiing every weekend. Yeah, oh, yeah man. he's very. He hikes. You yeah. know, in, in the off season, he hikes. I mean, he lo- he, uh, he loves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Way loves to stay it. Stay active. He yeah. loves it. He just wants to retire on a go kart. What are those? I don't. What, what is it that you want? I don't know if I ever want to retire. Right. I don't know if I can. What if I just don't do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just don't retire and yeah. don't go kart. How about it yeah. just never? No, go karting was gonna is gonna happen. Go karting. Yeah, because cool. our daughter wants to be Danica Patrick. Okay. She already told me. Yeah. Okay. She whispered it in his ear. <laughs> no. Uh, our next headline. Speaking of of young girls, a nine year old girl writes a letter to NBA star Steph Curry, complaining his shoes are only for boys, and he responds in kind. Uh, in kind. Uh, in this week, a nine-year-old from Napa, California, decided to write the basketball player a letter. She wanted to get a pair of Under Armour's Stephen Steph Curry shoes, Stephen Curry shoes, uh, for Steph a new hoop fine. season. Sports. Uh, you can call him stop! Steph. Stop! Stop! Don't shame me. Uh, for a new hoop season, but couldn't find any online. Uh, she was frustrated. The Curry Five shoes were only available in boys and men's sizes. Naturally, being a child and thinking, "Well, I can solve this," she writes him a letter. She's ignorant. And fire. the dad. Yeah, it's true. And her dad thought it was sweet, so he posted it online and said, "You know, I thought I'd see what happens here." And Steph Curry got it. He actually got this letter, and he wrote back, and he posted his response on Twitter just to make sure. And he did handwrite the letter. I have copies, so it's not. It's not that he was just. Oh, here's my Twitter response. Like, right. Actually wrote her back which is very kind and he said uh if i can sum this up very quickly i appreciate your concern i spent the last two days talking to under armor about how we can fix the issue we have labeled smaller sizes as boys on the website incorrectly we're correcting this right now i want to make sure you can wear my kicks proudly i'm also sending you a pair of curry fives and you'll be one of the first kids to get the curry six and he he had something about international women's day he wants her to come celebrate with them and 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 go march or it's a whole thing, and it's it's turned into this big thing on Twitter, and of course people love it. It's been very sweet, but this little girl, like you said, whose ignorance on fire, wrote him a letter and said, I'm going to get to the bottom of this, and made it happen. And she did, um, and y'all, I, I encourage you all to go Google the story and read the letters, because it's really pretty good. They and, are very sweet. And she, she you know, makes she, some excellent points. She really did. It was, And it wasn't... You know, I, in the article they say complaining, which they shouldn't use that because she wasn't. Cause she, I know, she, yeah, it's a bad she said She said it very eloquently, and it wasn't complaining. She just said, look, I know you... Um, she was like, uh, I know that you respect women. You have two daughters of your own, and and you you're probably just not aware that you don't have it, which is very wise because he probably has zero clue. He, like he's not involved. Like sure, literally, right. the shoe with gets his, his name career. on it, yeah. and he gets paid to do it. Really, he's not really that engulfed in it. But give him to his credit, he went okay. You're right. If that that's the deal, because he does have a couple daughters. I thought it was an awesome uh, article, and I think that. All that did was make me like Steph Curry a little more, even more, because that was just an awesome way to respond um, with the change. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everything about it, I thought it was a really cool story. Um, what was your second shot on it? Well, my second shot is kind of more so the ignorance on fire perspective from the girl. And when we say that, we're referencing Heath's book just because, you know, it's kind of like, what about the little guy? And, and mm-hmm. instead of thinking, oh, gosh, well, he's Steph Curry and here's his shoes and he's just trying to make money and, you know, he doesn't care about the girls anyway – she thought, hey, I see a problem. And instead of just complaining about it, 
I think I can actually make a difference. So she was confident enough um, to not think about the what if and, oh, he probably won't respond, to say, hey, you know, in a, in a diplomatic way, there's a problem here and I think you want to fix it. Yeah. You know, to, to kind of um, not put him on the defensive and not be accusatory. She was so smart in that way to not be accusatory. But this is just sort of a lesson for all of us. If there's a problem with something, you know, it takes... You could spend a lot of time complaining, actually. You know, yeah. if you complain to to your mom, to your spouse, to your child, well, shoot, there's 15 minutes right there. Is that not 15 minutes? You could have taken this as an action item and gone to the source and made a diplomatic request instead of a complaint. I think it was really classy on her point, p part, but also just the second shot of, you know what, oftentimes the little guy does have a say, especially in 2018 where, you know, the internet can go out to any and everybody. Yeah, no, and I, and I had the exact same really second shot take on is we, a lot of times you'll sit around at your work and you'll complain about how this is done and that's done and you, you you complain about it but you do nothing at all to make the moves to make that change right and maybe it starts with you changing something in order for that to get done or maybe in your community you hate how these certain things are done but you're not going and putting your name to be on that school board to change the education system or or the city council of wherever you're at and because you want to rather sit around complaining about maybe you're sitting around complaining about your spouse or or whatever, but you're doing nothing at all to make those changes yourself to to help maybe your spouse make a change, right? Like, I mean, mm -hmm. those people you sit around that complain about their family life being boring or whatever there is, and but they're do, they still going to do their same old routine. Yeah. yeah, it's like sit around, complain, waste that time with it, or get off get off your butt and go do something to make that difference with it. You know, like, and I'm okay with if you don't go get off your butt and do something, just don't complain. Right. Like, shut up. Or go do something. It's like broken equipment. You know, I, you guys, Zach and oh, Matt maybe can yes. uh, can understand this. Like working in media, everybody's, oh, you know, oh, how is it at such and such? Oh, our equipment's always broken. And then before you know it, you know, it, <laughs> I, did anyone make a maintenance request? Oh. So how would maintenance know that it was broken? We've been complaining about yes. this for six months, and all we've been doing is complaining, and yet nobody filed a maintenance request, which is the proper protocol, usually, to get something fixed. So, I mean, you know, all that minutiae aside, but it, it is just, it, do you guys notice that? Oh, no, not to not not to derail your, your bit here, but real ones know you didn't put in a maintenance request, because I put in six maintenance requests. They never <laughs> fill those things yeah. out. I never see that guy in the office. Yeah, there's always an excuse. You're right. You know, uh, but what I think about, too, on a... The other lesson on this is not only with the complaining you need to do something, either shut up or make a move and do it, you know, is take a lesson from this little girl on how to be diplomatic and polite and have manners to get changes done, not throwing your arms well in like a little baby mm. and going out there making these rants and these, these crazy rants and going off on all this psychotic <laughs> type stuff these people do, you know, throwing a fit versus, sure. you know, a very nice, polite, non-accusatory, non-attacking way. You know what I mean? Like, if she'd have went at her as throwing out there a big diss letter of Steph Curry hates women, doesn't have women shoes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have responded. Ooh. Of course not. The way he True. did. And if I was him, I wouldn't have responded the other way. You know why he made action quickly? I guarantee when he saw that, he made a call to Under Armour right then. Within two days, he had the, day, the stuff changed, okay? Because she took a nice... Non-accusatory, classy, yeah. classy approach, and things change. You're not going to change stuff by screaming and hollering, throwing a fit like a little baby, and thinking that that's going to make something go on. And, and that's what I think way too many people do, is attack people instead of, why not, why not assume the best? Mm -hmm. And if you're somebody that's attacking people, that's because you, you're, you're somebody who is not going to be thinking the best about yourself and what you do as well. And to underline the ignorance on fire, because I, I, I do want to come back to that. Uh, she didn't think, you know, Steph Curry, he probably gets a million letters a day. Yep. Right. He gets a billion ats on, on Twitter. You know, uh -huh. people at him all the time. Like, odds of him seeing this, real low. Didn't stop it, stop it for a second. She's like, oh, I'm just going to do it. Just going to see what happens. Yeah, like, maybe. Yeah. You know, it works for Santa Claus. Why can't it work for Steph Curry? Totally. And it did. <laughs> I love She's it. got good parents, because her parents... For her to go at it that way. And so what I want to challenge everybody, since I have no idea how long this segment's gone because Zach forgot to start well, the time. I, I can't hide usual. behind my dentist and say it's my fault, <laughs> that it's his fault that I didn't get the clock going, but you're right. Four <laughs> segments. Ah, I can't do yeah. it. It's fine. It's you fine. Know, but here's the thing. If there's something that you're complaining about, you need to go get it, change yourself to do whatever you can to start making the strides to it. You don't need to be going at it, throwing a fit, 
you know, making accusations, attacking people will never be the way to solve issues. You know what? Maybe it's a long way and it's a long, steady process to get a change done. But do it and don't do it accusing people. Don't do it attacking people. Um, assume the best out of them like this little young lady did and got the change happen with it. So stop complaining. Get off your butt and go make a move and make it happen. We'll be back in a minute on the third segment of Second Shot. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share with your people and i appreciate it thank you guys go pick it up today kick off your boots or suit up the choice is yours welcome back to second shot on rncm zach got the clock started this time so congrats buddy <laughs> thank you and, and you it's don't do it every time we out, filled out in that of, clock request look, out of six segments today uh-huh you've only missed it one time so look, that's that's good. good I job, just, buddy. I'll tell you what it is. It's because I got it so worked up in my head. Because right around the third or fourth one, I was like, I get to brag right <laughs> after six. <laughs> right as segment six starts, I get to be like, I did it. It finally happened, and then I blew it. I, I came you too. I flew cart, too close to the sun. You put the cart before I the I did all those eggs in one basket. That <laughs> was my problem. Um, on the third segment, we like to take your emails and reviews, and and we're gonna and, and we like to take some of the stuff from the second shot Facebook group that people post and talk about in there to give you all an idea of what some of the discussions going on. So the Second Shot Facebook group, something you should go and join. SecondShotCast at gmail.com if you want to send us an email with anything. Right, if you don't want it to be public or yeah. something like that. We yeah. don't use your name. Yeah. And and the other thing that are here, because you'll hear the ad and, and, you, and I've had some questions on it recently, which is Energy Ogre. So it's um, EnergyOGRE.com, okay? This is a real deal. It's not like a, you know... It's the only sponsor of the show. It's the, the yeah, only right. product that has passed the that I talk. Yeah, the besides rules the book, of, it's r- well, yeah, it's legit. We swear. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 if you go to Energy Ogre, if you it. live in the state of Texas, um, go look at it. Let it do your electricity. I've I've been using it, and I, everybody I know uses it because I pushed it so much because it saved me so much money, and it's super easy. And if you go sign up, um, when you go in there, you're you put your info in there, and if they don't save you money, then you don't have to sign up. It's a very simple, easy deal. That's what's great about it. You'll, you'll put your bill on there, and if they can't save you money, then then you don't do it. It's it's easy. Yeah. Um, but and what's the co- there's a code second so that shot. They don't have to and pay. so here's the thing: if you go in there when you do it, if you put on the coupon code, there'll be a spot for that. If you put in second shot, and here's the trigger with it: it does have a. Uh, it either has a space or no space, so try both ways. <laughs> I can't remember now. I'm going blank all okay. of a sudden on it. Um, but, real, but, real fans t- try both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah but because, well, you're going to get a month for free, so it's worth it to try it with uh, no space and a space unless you just want to give money yeah, away. Yeah, hey, it's free um, free money. Yeah, so uh, second shot is the deal, and it's either together or it's got a space. I can't recall, I but try both ways. I think it's together yeah. in my Energy, head. so E-N-E-R-G-Y. O G R E dot com, and then when you check out, use second shot as the code, and then you'll get your month free. Yeah. Either way, if, like Keith said, if you don't save money, then you don't have to pay, so yeah. you won't be out anything. Yeah, that's it's great, like, and it's only for people awesome. in the state of Texas right we now. Should, we should re-record those ads. Maybe have other people. I have Jenny do one. Yeah, It'd yeah, be great. Yeah, 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 like yeah. spice it up. Um, Remind people. I uh, wanted to, to read. We we had some reviews. Some people gave into the shit into the shaming um, yes oh let's hear it you know the first one which is interesting speaking of your dad it was your dad oh god what <laughs> your dad oh we were there re- over christmas yeah. Yeah. over we thanksgiving went to you mean over christmas oh, oh yeah christmas yet. hasn't happened thanksgiving he came down over off the ski the ski lodge <laughs> he and came yeah, off the ski. hopped off the bicycle seat <laughs> so mad by the way because heath had a, a tooth emergency and we couldn't go up on the opening day i didn't Aww. think it was open 
It was open that day. I didn't know that. My dad and I were both mad at you. Oh, I didn't know that. But we played oh. it cool. Yeah. Ignorance on fire. So he, <laughs> Not he, anymore, he though. Said yeah. he, he did at least give <laughs> us five stars. Out. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, he said yep. he was considering four. Yeah. And he said, I've enjoyed listening to the podcast. I always seem to get a little something out of every episode. I may be biased, but I especially enjoy the episodes with Jenny. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> That's sweet. Um, now, the other Thanks, one we, Papa. The other one um, we had is uh, it's titled Second Shots, Five Stars. It says, I'm new to the Second Shot podcast. And I'm working my way backwards to the first one. I love the teaching moments and positive perspectives you have for the stories you covered. Also enjoy the guest host uh, that you have on the show and hearing their stories. And it has a, a space that says, subscribe to the podcast, check. Read, in quotations, listened to Ignorance on Fire, check. Review the podcast on iTunes, check. I have completed the checklist. Please <laughs> remove me from the shame list, Jerry. Uh, oh. Jerry, you're Jerry. off the shame list. Yes, Kudos. Jerry. Every time I talk about shaming people, <laughs> you understand you are removed from that list, buddy. You are the man because that was a legit, um, everything about that was legit, and you are no longer being shamed. Everybody else that hadn't done it, you are still getting shamed at this moment. But, yeah. Jerry, not getting shamed anymore. By yeah. the way, if you end up doing the audio book or audio book version of Heath's book, it is actually his voice that recorded it. So you get to hear his um, gorgeous accent for the whole thing. Gorgeous. I, like I, I wouldn't mind listening yeah. to it. I already read yeah. the book, but shoot. Man. Also, uh, if I may, yeah. Christmas is coming up. So if you, this is a good book, I think for, well, really for anybody. I've had a lot of girlfriends that have been steady in their careers that have enjoyed it people who have given it for high school graduations college graduations um so it's not it's a easy reading in the way that it's easy to digest but it's not so simplistic that an adult wouldn't uh enjoy it so it fits, fits great in a stocking yeah anyway it's yes, got that so before, yeah it works out we, we it's on amazon the book is by the way uh, and we also had um a uh, one of the uh, I can say her name just because I know her and she's been on the show. Yeah. But I, I really loved this um, thought provoking that she came up with on on the pod, on the group, which is Melissa, who's been on the show. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I thought I like this was a really Melissa good um, discussion. And these are the type of things that you get in the Second Shot Facebook group if you go join it. Um, but she uh, posted this picture with a saying on it. She said, "What are your thoughts?" It says, "Who makes the biggest difference in the world? Kind people or tough people?" We always get the toughest questions kind on the second people. job page. I know. They're always ones I look at and I'm like, well, this is above my, my pay grade. I don't, I don't have a good answer. <laughs> Who makes the biggest difference in the world? Kind people or tough people? I don't think there's a wrong. I don't think you can go wrong as long as you're explaining your answer on this one. So I would certainly say kind people have the opportunity to make the biggest difference because I think you can be tough and kind at the same time, but you have to lead with kind. Um, somebody has to know that your intentions are pure and generous and have nothing to do with yourself and only to do with them. And then I think that the toughness is well received. Because I honestly don't think, I don't think a standalone kind person or a standalone tough person make much of a difference. But that's what I was saying. Is mm -hmm. I think you can be kind and tough, but you have to be kind before tough. I don't think tough can come before kind. <coughs> no, I agree. I'm, I'm saying I agree with you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Men, I'm just men, take a I'm note totally from kidding. my page. You know, <laughs> disagree with your wife. I love on to disagree with you. Yeah. No, I really do. I love to disagree with you on uh, some things. Yeah, I, I looked at that and I thought, you know, it's it's tough. I, I think of <laughs> maybe it's just because I'm in I'm in podcasting and this this is this is how i look at the world but you know i think kind people i think people who are who think outside the box a little bit right people who, who look at the way the world goes and go well it doesn't have you know we don't have to all be so screwed down and so particular in how we present ourselves we can be nice to other people just for the sake of being nice because it makes the it makes the ride better for all of us right and then there's I, those people are I don't know creative that's that's and I think of people who are are, are tough and, and they're, they're they're logical and they're they're particular like no this is the way it's got to be because this is the only way this whole thing keeps spinning right like we all have to work our stuff out and and do this the right way or the wrong way and this is the way it's going to be you get people who are who are creative you're, you're you know they, they look at the world differently you get people who are who are strong and smart and they look at the world that way and you get a it reminds, me, it reminds me of like your left brain and your right brain, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got totally. a bit of both, and we all have our strengths. But ultimately, you got you got to you got to have a yin and the yang. You got to have both sides of that coin to make the plane fly. Well, but here's the thing: is because the only way tough makes a change in the world is if if they're giving somebody tough and critical type feedback to help make them better, and people actually take that and and 
and make a change in themselves. Sure. And if you're not a person that they think actually is a nice person that is kind that cares about them, they're not going to take any of that that stuff, any of that feedback or any of that tough criticism you're going to give them. I'm a firm believer that if you honestly, genuinely care for people, um, look, the, some of the best lessons I ever know is when people want to give me the tough truths or the tough feedback. Those are the things you need sometimes to make those changes. But unless you're a kind person that people see as a genuine, thoughtful type person, they're not going to take your criticism or your toughness as a truth and actually make a change because they're going to go, you're just an a-hole. I'm right, that's not exactly listening. What I, was yeah, saying. I, I, know, I know that's what you're saying. I'm just agreeing with that and expressing <laughs> right. my point. <laughs> right, like, right. I mean, you, Yet you again, always I'm tell agreeing me that. with you. Yeah. And, yes, and the thing is, is um, <laughs> I have a mentor that, that Elena, that – she was able to grab people and tell people, and I used to remember thinking, man, i got to figure out how she can tell people the truth like that and be tough on them, and they still like her. Well, all I found out was that she genuinely did love and care for everybody she met. Like, I, you, you knew Elena loved you from the first time you did it. So by, by that genuinely being the deal, when she gave you the tough stuff, the tough talks, you listened because you knew where it was coming from. That wasn't coming from a um, – her it was she's not self-centered she she did care for you so like it was coming from a i'm i'm here for you so you listened to that toughness and you took it and you got better from it because you knew it wasn't coming from some self-centeredness type of person it was somebody that was kind and thoughtful and she was kind enough to be tough on you you know i think my people would tell you that i i am tough and that i have high expectations um but they also know that that I do anything for them, and that I do genuinely care about them, and that I'm put the things that I'm kind that I'm tough on them on is to make them better, and it's not coming from uh, something for Heath. And that's why I think that question is so intriguing. Is that you know it's kind of they got to go together. You've got to be out for people to be tough on them, or they're never going to take the criticism and actually make a change to become a better person which in, could change the world. Yeah. Sorry, can I jump in? I, I thought cool. you had something to say about no, all that. No, no, no. I already yeah. said mine. No, you've, you, you've always said change is inherently uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's the thing. Being, being nice and being uncomfortable don't go hand in hand. Like, ultimately, yeah. for it to work, you have to have a little bit of both. And you're right. It's, it's, that, it's that tough love. That's what makes a difference. Yeah. So the second shot Facebook group to get in some of these discussions are really cool. There's a lot of discussion chain on that. Yeah. Thanks for posting yeah. that, Melissa. Yeah. 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 And, and some of the other stuff, um, which is great. And energyogre.com. And um, I hope if we don't have another podcast before, then I don't even, I, I, I'm not thinking my timeline. We'll have one before Christmas, won't we? Oh yeah. I hope not. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting oh, confused yeah. on my the dates and time. Shot. Oh yeah, because we because we're gonna want to talk about what we're doing for New Year's and get um, our yeah, second yeah. shooters in on our New Year's tradition of um, dream boards, vision boards, and we'll kind of go over yeah. how to do that and everything. Uh, so the Christmas Jenny, spectacular. Jenny, yeah. Zach, and Matt, where can they find you guys? <laughs> JennyandChando.com at JennyandChando TV on Twitter and on Instagram and Facebook. Just search Jenny and Chando at Apple Zach and Tosh on Twitter and Instagram and that Facebook group, facebookcom slash second shot. Check it out. Come join the conversation. I'm Matt Stoker1 on Instagram, and I am hanging around lurking in the Facebook group. <laughs> lurking. You can find me there if you plumb the depths of that group. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty creepy, actually. Uh, Can't wait to plumb the depths. It's on fire corner. on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and the Second Shot Facebook group. I love you guys, and see you next time.